Hello, welcome to ASMR Whisper. Let me boy to sleep. This with a creaky desk. <laughs> this is going to be just me whispering and talking about the news. This is the new news. The new news. So, please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. I hope you're well. I hope everything is groovy for you. Yeah, groovy. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to look online for some news. Just see what strange things are happening. I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, uh, talk about, you know, anything kind of serious or anything like that. It's just gonna be, just stuff, you know, I know the newspapers and the internet's full of negative stuff, but I'm not going to focus on any of that stuff. I suppose the biggest, the biggest thing at the moment in the, uh, can you hear that? Wow. That was a bit, <laughs> that was loud. So yeah, the biggest thing really at the moment in the UK is we have a new Prime Minister. Yeah, new Prime Minister. And it's kind of, it's a fairly big deal here at the moment. So it's, uh, it's called Rishi, Rishi Sunak. And he used to be the Chancellor of the Exchequer, so in, in charge of the finances of the government uh, the last couple of years. So he's the new Prime Minister, the third since July. Can you believe it? Three Prime Ministers in three months. Blimey. So let me just have a look to see if there's any like interesting stories. Mm. Just gonna have a look. I have to change this desk; it's too creaky. I keep pressing on it because I like hearing it creak. <laughs> let me have a look. They don't seem to know what a American was. Uh, I've really set myself a, a big, a high target to try and find a positive news story. Uh, no, it's all negative. Everything is negative on this website. Even the subtitles of the different, you know, got home news and you've got all the different subtitles and all of those are, <laughs> it's amazing. 
Let me have a look at science. There should be some good stories in science. Ah, this is interesting. Secret communication of sea animals discovered. This is on the BBC News website. Uh, and this is an article by Georgina Renard, or Reynard, the BBC News Climate and Science. So according to this, a scientist has found that 53 creatures previously thought to be silent can actually communicate. Wow, isn't that exciting? Uh, apparently they used microphones to record the species, which includes turtles. Uh, they found them communicating that they wanted to mate or hatch from the egg. So apparently this is in contradiction to what was already known. I mean, I didn't know what the original knowledge was, to be honest. I'm not sure. So it's kind of, uh, it's all new to me. Apparently they, they suggest that all vertebrates that breathe through their noses and use sound to communicate descended from a single ancestor 400 million years ago. Now that make, kind of makes sense. I mean, are we a vertebrate? Humans? We breathe through our noses and use sound to communicate generally. But from one, sure, you, I mean, you need two, don't you? Mind you, there are some species do impregnate themselves. Ah. So that's, for, for me, the positive, the positive thing about the, this type of thinking is that all of us, all of us are related. We're all family. Like we're all the same blood. You know? Uh, and from that perspective, this should change what could change the way that we humans kind of behave towards each other. Maybe. Just an idea. I do, I do find it fascinating. And I say to people sometimes, you know, we are related. Because if you keep going back with humans, keep going back, keep going back, There has to be someone else. With human beings in our, in our present uh, state of human. Let's say we, we weren't human to start with. But, you know, in our, in our present state as humans. It seems that we must have all come kind of from the same place, from the same, or be related. Because you can stop going forward, but you can't stop going back. Now I can stop having kids. Well, I don't have any kids, but I could, you know, say that's it. And everyone could just say, no more children, that's it. 
But if you go backwards, someone somewhere had a child. But my parents. And then both of their parents had to have had the children to have them. And then both their parents had to have had children to have them. And their parents, they, you know, they had to have had, you know. So it's kind of, it goes back almost sort of into infinity, which means we're all connected in this big web of love. <laughs> big web of love. I find that, uh, I find that a bit heartwarming, if I'm honest. So apparently, this this article seems to be focusing on mating. Turtles make noises to indicate they want to mate, and so do humans. I mean, male humans is please. Please, please. That's, that's the noise men make. <laughs> it says, Comparing species like chimpanzees and humans only gets us back a few million years. So what they're saying from, I can understand is, Mind you, they said that years, didn't they? Like, we come from a me, is it Amiga or something? So, part of the creatures include 50 turtles, a tutara, I don't know what a tuatara is, a lungfish and a Sicilian. Okay, I'm going to look up that. What's a tutara? Look up. Continue. Tutar, a tuatara, I might, I might not be saying it right, are reptiles endemic to New Zealand. This is on Wikipedia. Despite their close resemblance to lizards, they are part of a, a distinct lineage. The order of Ryan Chopophilia. The name Tuatara is derived from the Maori language and means peaks on the back. The single extinct, extant species of Tuatara is the only surviving member of its order. What does extant mean? Is it the opposite to extinct? Extinct, extent. I'll have a look at that word. Extent. Uh, neontology is part of biology. It's a study of extent taxa. Taxa with members still alive. Okay, so it's kind of a part of the group. I think. I think. Let me see if there's any other. Oh, what's this? What's this? Uh, from it said, can you solve these tricky riddles from over one thousand years ago? This is more educational. Oh, this would be. Oh no, this is a video, so that's no good. No point watching a video when I'm doing this. Yeah, that's probably no good to be looking at that because it's it's kind of um, well educational.
information or we don't like to learn new things at all, no. Well, apparently scientists have discovered. It just, I just had this, uh, uh, like an advert thing pop up on my screen saying, one account connects all the BBC. Sign in is easy and quick. And then it gives the options, sign in or register. And then maybe later. What about no thanks? It's so pushy. So scientists discover six new species of rain frog in Ecuador. Wow. I never knew I was so excited about frogs. <laughs> scientists in Ecuador. Okay, the new species were found on the eastern slopes of the Ecuadorian Andes in two national parks. But the scientists who discovered them have warned that all six Pristimantis species were found within a 20 kilometer radius of deforested areas. Um, 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 board, sorry. Uh, here's another one. Lake Titicaca. Giant frog. Scientists joined forces to save species. Okay. Just have a look. That isn't how they headlined it. The headline for the, the article was Cross-Border Effort to Save Giant Scrotum Frog. Do you click on it? They don't mention it's scrotum at all. There's no ball bag, nothing. So why, why are they mentioning... S oh, oh it is, the frog lives its entire life in the waters of Lake... Titi Kaka. That's a weird, weird name, isn't it? Don't normally put those two words together, do you? Titi and Kaka. Booby and Poo. At nearby lagoons, it has loose, baggy skin which ripples around its body in folds, which earned it the nickname Scrotum Frog. <laughs> So basically what they're saying is it looks like a ball bag. Lovely. How wonderful. So another little bit of science. A rare Bolivian glass frog seen for the first time in 18 years. Apparently it's called a glass frog for some reason. Uh, it's not really saying why they're excited. And I don't know. Oh well. Let's look a bit, see if there's anything else in science that's... Okay, India. Indian rocket launches... 336 one web satellites good for them the london based satellite company oneweb is back on track with the launch of another 36 spacecraft for its global broadband internet system the platforms went up on lvm3 rocket 
from Srihari Kolka. Uh, but this is by Jonathan Amos, BBC science correspondent. Sunday's flight brings the number of satellites now in orbit above the Earth to 462. This is more than 70% of the total OneWeb needs to achieve worldwide coverage with its first generation constellation. The firm, part owned by the British government, expects to complete the rollout in the middle of next year. So, then there's another, like a, a linked article, Starlink, why is Elon Musk launching thousands of satellites? Ooh, why is he doing it? Why, 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 why? So, they're part of the Starlink project, which aims to provide high-speed internet services from space to remote areas on Earth. So, it's just explaining, it's kind of a I suppose a bit of an advert for Elon Musk, really, and his company. Starlink provides internet services via a huge network of satellites. It's aimed at people who live in remote areas who cannot get high-speed internet. And it's in brackets. There are people in the UK... In, in that category, but more across the world, in places like Africa, says Dr. Lucinda King, Space Projects Manager at the University of Portsmouth. Starlink satellites have been put in low-level orbit around the Earth to make connection speeds between the satellites and the ground as fast as possible. So apparently lots of them are needed. And so far they put 3,000 since 2018 into space. May eventually go up to twelve thousand. It says here using satellites solves the problems of getting internet connection to remote locations in deserts and mountains. He said it it bypasses the need to build massive amounts of infrastructure like cables and masts, cables and masts, to reach those areas. So here's the cost, here's the cost. Compared to standard internet providers, Starlink isn't cheap. It charges $99 per month, 89 in the UK. Eighty-nine pounds. The dish and router need to connect to the satellites, and that costs five hundred forty-nine dollars, roughly five hundred twenty-nine in the UK. However, ninety-six percent of households in the UK already have access to high-speed internet, as do 90% of households in the European Union and the United States. So, it's saying here, most of the developed world is already well-connected. 
they relied on a small share of the market for revenues. Uh, the company says it's got 400,000 subscribers in 36 countries. The thing is, in I don't know about uh, other countries, but in England, with cable broadband, nearly all of them force you to have a phone as part of the contract like a landline phone now Virgin doesn't because they have their own cables they have their own system their own underground cables but BT anything most companies go through BT or BT's subsidiary company um, Open World or Open whatever it is so you end up paying for a phone that you never use generally I've got a phone line I'd never use, but I used a phone line for the broadband, internet. And it's, you know, it's very, you know, you get broadband, you have to, you have to come and set it up and all that stuff. Yeah, what I did, I've got, I've got some other broadband, which is uh, mobile broadband with is it three so there's no cables there's no contract I pay £30 a month and it just uses I guess it just uses what mobile connection so it connects to the nearest mobile thing I don't know if it uses I don't know, do they use satellites? I'm not sure. But that internet is probably four times better than the broadband that I've got. I can do more on it. With the broadband, I can do one thing at a time. It's really not very good. I use it mainly just for the television. And I can, you know, use it for just going through the internet and basic stuff, you know, streaming but not two things at once. Seriously, it's not very good to, for that. But the mobile broadband, I can, I can do four, five. I can have one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I've tested it with five different things going at the same time. So I had two iPads, laptop two mobile phones or uploading you know uh, podcasts at the same time and it's it works I mean, sometimes it gets a little bit stuck in it but generally and it goes slower than it would do if it was just one thing being used but it's still, you know, so much better, so much better than the, than the other one. So that's how I see the future. And if the satellites are better than the, than the mobile, then, you know, I mean, it's weird because it had a thing put through the door for a company that's digging up the roads or well, they will be digging up the roads soon for about a week or two to put in cable to provide super fast broadband for the whole area so it's like wow but how fast is super fast because at the moment the I just personally, I seem to find that the, what's it, you know, the uh, the mobile internet seems to be the quickest. It just seems to be like a much faster, but then I've not had any fast internet ever. So maybe I've just, I've not been able to enjoy like super fast internet because I've never been able to get it. It's not available, or hasn't been available here. I 
remember I contacted uh, Virgin. This is at my previous address, I think. Or might have been, it might have been here, actually, years ago. And they, they put a letter through my door. Advertising. Um, so this is Virgin Internet. Super fast broadband. So I phoned them up and I said, yeah, I'm interested. I said, oh, I'll take your postcode. and Oh, we don't offer it there. I said, well, you put a leaflet through my door. Why are you advertising something that isn't available to me? What is your deal? And he said, well, we can't have it everywhere. We, if, we, if we get enough interest... We'll move into a new area, but it costs, you know, just doing a couple of roads cost about half a million. I said, that's okay. Spend the money. He said, doesn't work like that. I said, it does now. Now get it done. <laughs> no, I didn't. I said, no, well, why are you at? Don't put things through my post. Stop teasing me. If it's not available, don't, to me, then don't put it in my, through my letterbox. And he said, I didn't actually put it through your letterbox myself. I don't even live in the same town. I said, that's not the point. <laughs> but it's okay, we ended up going for a drink. Got on really well, that's brilliant. Okay, have a look, what's next? James... NASA rocket. Ah, I didn't know this. It says here, Virgin Orbit rocket arrives for first space launch from the UK. Have we never done a space launch from the UK before? I didn't know that. I didn't, genuinely didn't know that. The rocket will conduct the first ever orbital mission from UK soil. It's been delivered to its spaceport. Virgin Orbit's Launcher 1 vehicle came into Nuki, Cornwall. Late on Friday, on a military plane from California, where it was made. And it's, uh, the rocket will now be prepared for its flight into space sometime next month. So I guess that's November. It says here that nine satellites will will take the ride a few hundred kilometers above the earth a few hundred kilometers okay. Oh, that's interesting. There's going to be a heck of a lot of satellites out there. Lots and lots and lots. I just think, you know how amazing it would be if the whole world just got together, just pulled, pulled their resources all together. Technological advances could be amazing. It's just, everyone sort of said, no, forget everything else. Yeah, let's start looking outward and let's start looking forward. Let's look at space or exploration. And let's look at setting, setting up communes on different planets and the moon and wherever because you know while we can perhaps we're a bit overcrowded on this planet so maybe instead of 
getting in each other's way, we can work together and find a, a solution. Not a solution, but a solution. Solution. Let's have a look. I just never looked to see if there's anything. I'm gonna look at tech. Uh, regular needs to do the do. I still. Oh, look. Even in the tech, like 80, 80% is negative stuff. They love, can't just tell us some nice mm -hmm. things. Some interesting things that are nice, positive. Here's one that I found one. This is from four days ago. This is again on the news, uh, BBC News Technology by Chris Valance, a technology reporter. A flying car that could turn into a biplane. What's a biplane? How exciting a fl uh, well, I guess it's a, a, a car that can fly. I mean, what? I didn't know there was such a thing. So it says, at a launch event at Draper University in San Mateo, California, a startup revealed how its flying car hopes to take off. So it's still in development. They must have tested it though, surely. So it looks like a sleek electric car but be capable of vertical takeoff and able to fly for 68 miles. 68 miles! Wow! This, this will change everything. I mean, not for me, because I don't drive, but... Blimey! Can you imagine? Is this, that, that is the future, isn't it? You know, all the futuristic movies. Well, you know, if you, so many movies have flying cars, don't they? Wow. I'd love to see that in action. I mean, they must have tested prototypes, so it must work. Otherwise, I don't know, why would they be mentioning it? You know, how do they know that it can drive for 68 miles, or fly for 68 miles? He says, um, well, apparently there are other flying cars. What? I didn't, what, what? The firm hopes to compete in a market occupied by well-advanced rivals such as Aircar and the PAL V Gyrocopter that are already flying and driving. There's already cars that fly. I didn't know that. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Did you, do you know someone else that knows that? I didn't. I've just gone to the um, flying. This is a different article. Flying car completes completes test flight between airports. This is from the thirtieth of June two thousand and twenty one by Zoe Kleinman. This is on the. Uh, Everything I've looked at today has been on the BBC News website. A prototype flying car 
has completed a 35-minute flight between international airports in Nitra and Bratislava, Slovakia. The hybrid car aircraft, Aircar, is equipped with a BMW engine and runs on a regular petrol pump fuel. Its creator, Professor Stefan Klein, said it could fly about 1,000 kilometers, 600 miles. Wow! A height of 8,200 feet. That's 2,500 meters. And it clocked up already 40 hours in the air so far. So it works. It's, you know, it genuinely works. Wow. Apparently it takes 2 minutes and 15 seconds to transform from car into aircraft. But when they say to transform, do you have to do it yourself? <laughs> you know, like, you know, those flat, flat pack uh, desks and flat pack furniture that you buy. It supplies you with those screwdrivers, you know, the weird thing. Maybe that's what they have to do. Have to get the wings and put it on. And, yeah, I wouldn't trust my DIY skills with that. Can you imagine? I mean, it, it's, it would cost an absolute fortune, wouldn't it, to buy a flying car? I mean, it's, I don't know. Maybe it says it here how much they cost. <sighs> Huge amounts of money. But if it came in a flat pack, that just would stay in a flat pack. I wouldn't be able to do anything with it. It says here that this is a prediction from 2019. Consultant company Morgan Stanley predicted the sector could be worth $1.5 trillion by 2040. Which is... Where are we in now? That's 18 years away. Blimey, I'll be, I'll be over 30 by then. Is... Oh, what? It says the prototype is taking two years to develop and costs less than two million euros, 1.7 million pounds in investment. I mean, that's not a lot of money, is it? I mean, it is, but in the sense of two years of work to produce this car, and they've only they've spent It just seems like quite a small amount of money when you, unless there's just one person working on it part time, or maybe people are working on it and they're not taking any money. They just, or perhaps they've got shares in the company and they're happy, thinking they're going to be all be rich, which they will be, I guess, if it works. It's like wow. You know, it says here, there are about 40,000 orders of aircraft to the United States alone, he said. And if we convert 5% of those to change the aircrafts to the flying car, we have a huge market. Okay. It brings up a whole different thing though, doesn't it? Because you think about it. In this country, in the, in the UK of England, Commonwealth, Britain, we... 
I think they had a thing by it would have been probably about five years time maybe less that all cars all by all cars will have to be electric I don't know where they're going with that now if it's still the case they're trying to get rid of petrol cars and diesel I don't know if they'll be able to get rid of diesel because a lot of lorries and vans use diesel don't they and that's what that's where all that stuff comes from, isn't it? Lorries and vans delivering them. So I don't know if there's such a thing as an electric lorry. I don't know. I'm not sure. But going back to that other article, when they went 68 miles, that was electric, wasn't it, I think? So I guess that would be the difference. But as... I guess as progress... In the same way that... Computers used to fill a whole room... And then eventually they got to the point where you could have them... You know, on a laptop... Or on a, on a, on a desk... But very slow, very... You know very small energy not much space not much anything to a point where you've got a mobile phone a tiny little phone that has more power than any of that stuff used to have and the I mean it's amazing so I guess based on that kind of thinking Eventually, perhaps there'll be a, a new technology other than electricity to run these things off. And perhaps they'll just be able to run. You go for, you know, hundreds of miles before being recharged. Perhaps they could have solar panels I don't know. You know, it reminds me a little bit. When I was a kid, I used to have sketchbooks. And I used to love drawing spaceships and cars. Basically cars that flew. Which is... But it wasn't like, a, wow, I was ahead of my time. Because loads of science fiction TV shows had flying cars it was just normal but I used to like to do it and just have my own like designs I'd love to see that stuff now just I don't know it's amazing some of the things from the past just like to sort of I'd like to just have a look at some of those drawings I used to make and Listen to some of the tapes I used to make of me singing and writing songs when I was a teenager. Uh, just some of the poems I used to write. You know, just it's all gone. I don't know. It's just disappeared. But it'd be so. It'd just be interesting to see. You know. I remember when I saw pictures. I had um. My dad and my stepmom put together a photo album for me. And it was pictures of me right from birth all the way through my life. You know, pictures that they'd taken or pictures that um, had been taken of me when I was little. It's very strange. I hadn't seen those pictures for some of them never before, but others for such a long time. And it was just weird. It's like, I used to be that little boy. I used to be tiny. But then we all did. We all used to be babies. Every single one of us. And it's just, just such a weird concept. 
And uh, some people probably think, well, it's not really that weird, is it? He was a baby, we was all babies. What's weird about it? I just, I just think it's just a bit strange. Just when I think about it, it's like, really? I used to be a little baby. Wow. Oh, this uh, Dr. Stephen Wright is a senior research fellow in avionics and aircraft at the University of West... University of the West of England described the air car as the love child of a Bugatti Viron and seen the sensor Kensa 172. I don't know what that means. I've heard of a Bugatti... Uh, it's a sports car, isn't it, I think? And he says, Anyone can make an airplane, but the trick is making one that flies. What? Well, it's not an airplane if it doesn't fly, does it? If, it's, if it doesn't fly, it's not an airplane. A car's not a car if it hasn't got an engine and it doesn't drive. It's not a car, is it? Just because someone looks looks like a car doesn't mean it's a car. It's not a car. A car has to, you know? It's like giving me a plastic cake. A cake that looks like a cake. And I bite into it and everyone laughs. <laughs> oh, oh, the fat man just bit into the, the plastic cake. Well, it's not a cake, is it? If it's plastic. So if it's not... Okay, I'll stop. But it's not a plane. Anyone can make a plane, but the trick is to make one that flies. No, it's not a plane if it doesn't fly. Oh, actually, there's more to the sentence. Anyone can make an airplane, for the, but the trick is to make him one that flies and flies and flies for the thick end of a million hours with a person on board without having an incident. I can't wait to see the piece of paper that says this is safe to fly and safe to sell. Would you get into a car like a new invention? I would, but only if it was... Uh, I think it'd have to have some kind of safety wires attached to a crane or something, you know, to make sure that if it didn't go well, it was fine. Or we'll only have it so it goes three inches above the the ground and it only doesn't go more than two miles an hour or something like that but that's not going to happen is it I don't know I mean how would it can be controlled because you think with planes there's air controls isn't there there's people Every every plane in the sky is controlled, or it should be. Well, every above a certain height, I think. I don't know how it works, but you know, all the big planes they're controlled. They're on a, a, a you know, how how can you control, which would be end up in millions and millions of planes, or car planes, millions. Look at the roads, people just do their own thing, so they don't. I mean, it's there are rules, aren't there? And how many people follow the rules on the ground? So, how many of those people would follow the rules in the air? I don't know. Be in very interesting. Very interesting. It's just the idea that if a plane crashes, 
it could end up in your roof. It's like, that's not good. I didn't want that to happen. Although you could have your garage on top of your roof, couldn't you? Your parking spot on your roof. Wow, I never thought of that before. Now that's all I can think about. Let's see if there's any sporting nice stories. Not there, nothing there. Oh, there is one nice one. There's a couple. So first of all, Ireland Captain Balburnie hits brilliant 62. So well, well done to you. Uh, the lioness's star fulfilling her dream in Germany. So that's nice. That's a, that's a nice thing. So this is by Michael De Silva. Football journalist based in Germany. Georgia Stanway has scored six goals in her past nine England appearances, including this extra time winner against blah blah. Just before I hit it, you can see that I kind of stepped to the side. I usually play the ball out of the wing in that situation. But for some reason, nobody came towards me, blah, blah. So, good luck, good luck to you. That's all I've got to say on that one. So, that's cool. Uh, what else? Um, beep, 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 beep. Audi to team up with Sauber for F1 debit. So I don't know what that's about. Fantastic effort for Chelsea to top group. Okay. Tyson Fury. Okay. I love Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury to release debut single for mental health charity. So, boxer Tyson Fury is to release his debut single to raise money for men's health charity Talk Club. The two time world heavyweight champion has covered Neil Diamond's classic Sweet Caroline. The song is set to for release on the 11th of November. Ahead of the FIFA World Cup in Qatar, it was chosen for its status as a fan favourite at many UK sporting events. With Fury saying he feels a particular connection to the track. Sweet Caroline is a record I've always loved, and I'm excited to record. And release it, said the 34 year old British boxer who's known for singing in the ring after his bouts. And thanks to the folks over at the Warner Music, they've given me the opportunity to do that. And what better time to release it than around the World Cup, he said. Ah, so that's, that's pretty cool, so that would be, um, that was three hours ago that was put on there, so I can't see anything else, that's about the only positive things I could find on the BBC website, news website, uh, the other stuff, every, every headline is near enough, is just not nice, you know, so I'm not going to read that stuff out, you don't need me for that, you just go online or watch the news, but I was kind of surprised, 
Not hugely surprised, but I thought there'd be a bit more. Oh, this is exciting. Well, for me, I like this stuff. Tesla shows off humanoid robot prototype. That's a video, but I'm going to read what it says. Oh, it doesn't. Vehicle maker Tesla has shown off a prototype for its humanoid robot named Optimus. CEO Elon Musk said that there was a lot of work to do to refine the model, but that he hoped it could be mass produced with a sale price below $20,000. Blimey. <laughs> we really are moving into the future and we're not I thought we'd already were in the future me. wow there's something here this is a robot developed that's smaller than a flea scientists at Northwestern University in the United States have developed 3D remote control robots that can walk turn and jump are less than one millimetre in size. I've actually seen that. There's a, there's a really good show that BBC do, BBC News do. It's called Click, C-L-I-C-K, Click. And it's just a lot of like the latest technology. It's really good. I like it. I like it a lot. It's very good. It's very good. So it's worth... Um, checking out I think you can probably watch it online on YouTube or something if you don't have access to the BBC news where you are but I do believe that's the end of the recording I have to try out different websites to to see you know Try at different websites to see what's if I can find some more positive stuff because well we all know that with the news it's not always uh, they don't seem to focus on the nice stuff so I want to find I want to find some nice things that I can sort of talk about some nice stories happy positive stuff. So I will search the world, or well, I'll search the in internet, but I will search and find stuff. So thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself. Remember to be gentle with yourself. Because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love.